In this video, we are going to tie together our understanding from the last couple of videos about predicting the products of addition reactions that involve adding electrophiles across the carbon-carbon double bonds of dienes, looking at predicting products under both thermodynamic and kinetic conditions. In other words, conditions where the temperature is high, favoring the thermodynamic conditions, or the temperature is very low, favoring the so-called kinetic conditions. So let's go ahead and take out an example. So we are asked in this example to predict the major organic products at minus 50 degrees and at 100 degrees. So what I'm going to do is to accomplish this, I'm going to walk through the mechanism for this reaction. In this example, we're looking at a conjugated diene reacting in a hydration reaction with sulfuric acid and water. The principles of the mechanism here are very analogous to what we were doing with the addition of HBr and HCl across the carbon-carbon double bond. And that first we protonate, and then we have a nucleophile, in this case water, come in and attack the electrophilic resonance stabilized allylic carbocation. So let's go ahead and first and foremost, first step of the mechanism is going to be protonation. So bringing in my acid, you don't have to write out the full structure there of H2SO4. We'll just abbreviate it as H plus here. What's going to happen is that one of the two sets of pi bonds come over and form a bond to the proton. We have to decide which set of pi bonds to use here because we have, in this particular case, an asymmetrical set of dienes. The one that we are going to prefer here is to give the most stable product, the most stable product, the most stable carbocation, the first consideration is that it will be allylic, that is adjacent to a carbo, adjacent to a alkene group. And the second is that it will be the most alkyl substituted. So first thing we want to focus on is make sure that your carbocation is allylic. Secondly, if there's multiple allylic possibilities, go with making the carbocation the most alkyl substituted possible carbocation. So in order to make the most alkyl substituted carbocation possible out of this reaction, the way we can accomplish that is take the pi bond from here, bring it over to pick up the proton. And once the proton resides here at this position that I'm highlighting with my laser pointer, that will put the carbocation right here. That will be a tertiary carbocation that's also stabilized by resonance due to the fact that it is allylic. So that takes care of all these factors for making the most stable possible carbocation. So we'll go ahead and do that. So carbocation goes right here, allylic to our pi bond. The new proton will have formed a bond here and that's implied. And we can use resonance using our double-headed arrow there to illustrate that the positive charge is not localized on that one carbon, but instead it's delocalized over multiple carbon atoms within this molecule to stabilize the intermediate here. So by moving the pi bond over to right here, that places the positive charge out here at the end, giving us these two resonance structures. Then next up on our docket of things to do here is we take each of those two resonance structures and the nucleophile is going to attack them. So the nucleophile attacks the carbocation. In this case, looking back at our reaction mixture, we have available to act as the nucleophile is the water. So we bring in the water, which will attack each of the two carbocations. And to keep my arrows clean here in this miniature mechanism, I'm just gonna erase this electron pushing arrow here that was showing resonance so that we can illustrate the nucleophilic attack going on nice and cleanly here. So nucleophile water comes in, uses its lone pair of electrons to attack the carbocation right here. And in our other carbocation, the water attacks right here. And this is going to lead us to our two intermediates upcoming here, where one of them has an allylic water group here, positive formal charge there on our alkyl oxonium. And the other one, similarly, we are going to go ahead and place the water group out here at the end. So I'll put OH2 positive formal charge there. And then finally, in the last step of this mechanism, 
which I'm not going to show explicitly since we're not really trying to write out a whole mechanism here. We're just trying to predict the major products. It doesn't ask us specifically for a mechanism is that the third thing here is that we do deprotonation, losing a proton from water to create a hydroxy group. So you'd lose a proton here by bringing in another unit of water and deprotonating here versus here to give us the two different constitutional isomer products. So this is one of our constitutional isomer products and our other constitutional isomer product resulting from deprotonation would be this one right here. So we'll put our hydroxy group in right there, making sure that I haven't added or deleted any carbons along the way. We started with a five carbon chain, so we should finish with a five carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that looks good. Another way to check to make sure that you're on the right track is make sure that your group that you've added is allylic to a double bond. Hydroxy group is allylic here to a double bond. Hydroxy group is also allylic here in our other constitutional isomer to the double bond. So we're good to go there. So now we need to predict which of these products is going to dominate at minus 50 degrees and which is going to dominate at 100 degrees. So at minus 50 degrees, reaction carried out in the deep freeze, low temperatures favor kinetic control. And when we are under kinetic control conditions, what that means is the reaction can't reach equilibrium because the temperature is too low. There's not enough energy for the reaction to go in the forward and reverse direction. So whatever it arrives at fastest, the product is stuck as that. And what's going to determine what it arrives at fastest is the stability of the intermediates. So in the kinetic control situation, the intermediate stability or the intermediate energy determines the outcome. And the reason it determines the outcome is because there is no equilibrium. On the other hand, once we elevate the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius, for example, the reaction is under what we refer to as thermodynamic control, which means that there is equilibrium and that as a result of there being this equilibrium, the reaction can go back and forth, forward and reverse until it reaches the final most stable product. And so in the thermodynamic situation, the final product's stability drives the outcome or determines the outcome. And so taking a look at our two scenarios here, our two products, we should say, what one is going to fa be favored under our low temperature conditions are kinetic control conditions, in other words. So going through the mechanism here, kinetic control, low temperature is going to favor the intermediate that has the lowest energy so coming through here, particularly at this step with our resonance structures, which of these two is the more stable? The more stable one is the top one here because that's a tertiary allylic carbon versus down here is a primary allylic carbon. So right here is the more stable one. So that's going to be what leads to the kinetic product. So the kinetic product coming across here, following it straight through would be this product up top here. So this is your kinetic product. This is the product that would be favorable at low temperatures, minus 50 degrees Celsius, for example. On the other hand, at 100 degrees Celsius, we favor the product that is the most stable in the end game. So due to the fact there's equilibrium at 100 degrees Celsius, the reaction go forward and reverse. Ultimately, what's going to determine the product is what the final stability is. And looking at the two products here, the final most stable product is going to be our product right here where we have our um, hydroxy group allylic on this most alkyl substituted alkene group. So when we look at the alkene, we have two alkyl branches coming off up here. We only have one alkyl branch coming off. So this is the more alkyl substitute alkene and ultimately that's going to make that product more stable. So at 100 degrees Celsius, being that the thermodynamic conditions favor the most stable final product, that's going to be our favorite product at 100 degrees Celsius. And if we backtracked to classify these as the 1-2 product or the 1-4 addition product, we would find, mapping that out here, that our new proton added 
right here in our intermediate. We can draw out that new proton right here as well. So in this top case, the water came in adjacent on the adjacent carbons. We call this the one, two product that I'm circling here at the end because the H and the OH added on adjacent carbons. The situation down here, the H and the OH added at position one and position four relative to one another. So we call that the one, four addition product. And that's key terminology that you should be familiar with because in these types of reactions, you may be asked to provide all of the possible products, which would mean list the kinetic and the thermodynamic, or you may be given specific guidelines that steer you toward one or the other. In the case of this, a high temperature steering you toward the most stable product, a low temperature steering you toward the product that has that corresponds to an intermediate that has lower energy and hence can be achieved faster under those low temperature, low energy conditions. You could also be asked in these problems to list me the one four addition product or list me the one two addition product. You need to understand the terminology of what we mean when we say that the two groups add at position one and position four or position one and position two. So these are some ways that you might see this type of example come up in the future.